Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video you'll we'll have the latest from the live radar Remember the latest weather warnings as we do have a rain warning issued in the west at the moment expiring through this evening we'll look at the latest UKV, look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as we are still going to see some gusty conditions and bits and bobs of rain in the south Maybe a bit of persistent rain further northwards on Thursday. But apart from that, higher pressure is building in. Things are looking likely to turn much drier and milder for a time to start February. But I say milder for a time because as we head into early February, there has been quite a notable shift today in the positioning of the higher pressure that could allow an easterly flow to develop into early February. Now, we have been talking about that risk for a good couple of days now, and we'd seen a few hints of it, but there has been a little bit of a shift today, not a monumental one. You know, we're not going to be seeing massive amounts of snow or anything like that from most of the runs, but definitely much colder conditions, the risk of a bit of wintriness, and the risk that it could get a little bit more severe into mid-February if we did see a full-blown easterly wind start to take off. But the big change we've seen today is that higher pressure slightly further northwards, allowing that easterly wind to develop from some of the main models, like the GFS and the ECMWF, and quite a few ensemble members as well have shifted quite a bit colder as well. So we'll explore that in the second half of the video. So do remember, if you enjoy the videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, still very blustery with heavy showers around through this evening. And that's because we've had the centre of Storm Hermenia clearing across parts of central England. Now, of course, the system was at its peak 36, 48 hours ago. It has weakened quite a lot over the last day or so but still has packed a punch around the centre of the low, which is now just sat between England and the Netherlands in this gap here in the English Channel, heading up into the North Sea. That is where we are seeing um, Storm Hermenia clearing through now. And you still see quite a few hefty showers along the Far East Coast, but most of those hefty showers have now cleared out to sea or into the near continent. We're still seeing some blustery showers pulling in on the backside of the system, but most of these are starting to clear away now. Uh, they were really heavy in around London, central southern England, to East Anglia earlier today. Even a bit of thunderstorm activity in a few spots, but it is dying down and that should be the end of widespread stormy conditions for the time being. Further north, it's a few showers pulling in, but because that low's cleared, we are unlocking the door to a northerly wind for a short period of time. It will pull some pretty cold air in and we could see some frosts in the next couple of days. As you look at the temperatures at the moment, still very chilly in northern areas, a bit milder further southwards, but still feeling quite cold. With all the low cloud around, it is going to hold those temperatures up overnight. So even though they are pretty chilly and have been pretty chilly through the day, overnight they're not actually going to drop all too much. Not too much of a diurnal range in most areas. But further northwards and westwards, clearer skies, bringing that northerly or northwesterly flow in it will drop closer towards freezing, if not below freezing. To look at the weather warnings, we do have one weather warning issued here for South Wales. Again, we won't look at this in detail because it does expire in about an hour and a half after I'm recording this. And we just saw on the live radar, not too much now going on across South Wales. But we have seen some quite big impacts here from lots of persistent rain and heavy showers. But you can see throughout the rest of the week into early February, no warnings issued at the moment. And to be honest, I'm not expecting any major warnings issued for the time. Being no disruptive weather really on the horizon, or at least no major disruption. Risk into early February, potentially, maybe, of a bit of wintriness if we saw that easterly flow. But that's the only sort of thing I could foresee that could warrant warning. So a bit of a lull now in the conditions after a really quite stormy last week or so. Now to go over to the latest UKV and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days. If I do quickly refresh this so we get all the live data, you can see Storm Hermenia, the centre is now clearing to the east, pulling all those heavy showers away. And you can see as we head into Wednesday, it's a much brighter day, a bit of sunshine breaking through and turning much drier. You can see across the far south coast, a little bit of rain pushing in, and this is kind of big severe storm system that is developing towards the Bay of Biscay but it's going to have minimal impacts on us it's going to be a big storm for France Portugal and Spain I actually do believe it has been named by one of their met services but again uh, I'm not 
completely in tune with what the naming is of this system as it's going to have minimal impacts on the UK at all. Perhaps a few bits and bobs of gusty winds along the far south coast and maybe just skimming that rain there across the far south or southeast. But for most, dry and fine through Wednesday and into Thursday. Again, wintry showers packing in for Scotland and another pretty cold northwesterly flow developing, keeping it chilly into the final couple of days of January. We do see a weather front bumping into some of that cold air and could see a bit of a marginal snow event there for some northern areas over higher ground. But the precipitation should move through quite quickly, so expecting no more than maybe a couple of centimetres over the higher ground and maybe a bit of falling snow there overnight for lower lying areas. It does clear through and milder air does build in. And this is where we start to see high pressure taking over. Look at this precipitation pushing in. And you think for early February we're going to go very unsettled. But the precipitation doesn't have much success. Look at this, it does push in, but it fizzles away quite significantly towards day five. And that's because it's coming up against higher pressure that's trying to build in from the south. It makes temporary inroads getting chiseled away and higher pressure firmly building in there into the latter part of the weekend. So yes, could be a bit of rain with this system in the north and west, but as it moves in, it does degrade away and eventually much drier conditions as high pressure firmly builds in. If you look at the upper air temperatures, churning chilly over the next couple of days, the risk of frosts in those northern and western areas where we do put in that chilly northerly wind, but generally not expecting anything too major. And you can see eventually as we do head into the weekend, milder air will build in from the southwest, but most importantly, we are seeing higher pressure. So depending on the air mass, could be a bit frosty, could be a bit cold, but the big thing is it will be turning much, much drier as that high pressure does build in. Now, do you look at the max temperatures? You can see as we head into Wednesday, chilly overnight, but not massively cold as we've got a lot of trapped cloud, especially further southwards. You can see about six to eight degrees for much of England and Wales there. And then you can see as we progress into Thursday, another frost in those northern and western parts, really quite cold there. And into Friday, uh, Thursday afternoon, once again, five to seven degrees. So much colder day there, colder feeling as well with that northerly wind. More of a widespread frost air into Friday morning, but it does clear in those western regions as we do see cloud building in. And for Friday during the day, the last day of January, it's really quite cold in the north and east. Further westwards, more cloud building in, temperatures starting to climb. And then into early February, the 1st of February, it is a chilly day, but rain is pushing in, building a milder slot. But it doesn't do much to those temperatures as we still remain pretty chilly there all the way to Sunday. So generally we are cold or a little bit on the colder side of average there throughout the next five days, but nothing major, a bit of frost, again, not too unusual for this time of year, maybe a bit of high uh, ground wintriness and a bit of rain there through Thursday perhaps, and maybe again on Saturday. But generally speaking, conditions are dying down, back to kind of average in terms of temperatures and starting to look quite a bit drier there as we do head into early February. But, as we'll now see from the longer range, things could all change into early February. High pressure still looks likely to be involved, but it's where the high pressure does go. A lot of runs over the last couple of days have kept high pressure over the top of us, maybe building it slightly further south with the jet stream having a good go. But today, as I said, we've seen quite a shift towards more of an easterly flow developing with some of the runs. We have seen this hinted by a few, quite a few models throughout the last couple of weeks, so we wouldn't be surprised if it came off, but at the same time, all of those models have eventually backed off. So again, I wouldn't be surprised if this was another back off here. When we do get nearer to the time. So you can see that storm system clearing southwards, impacting much of Western and Southwestern Europe, not Northwestern Europe, as we see higher pressure building in into the weekend. Small little weak weather front moves through there into Sasa. That could give us that bit of rain through the weekend. But then high pressure builds in, coming up against a very strong jet stream initially, which means the high pressure doesn't do much into early February, the first few days at least, keeping it dry and fine. Not too much going on. Continues to get strained by the jet stream there for the first full week, but that high pressure has a bit more success into the second week of February. Look at this, we actually do see an easterly wind pushing in. Now it isn't bitterly cold, and there isn't a massive cold pool, but it would push some pretty chilly air our way and at least keep us below average, frosty, and 
with potentially some fog and even a bit of snow. You can see a cold pool is there sat to our east and it kind of just sits there continuing pushing colder than average air our way and it does mean that at times we could be very cold, low to single digits during the day well below freezing overnight from not a particularly remarkable pattern but it's the fact that we've just got this big block of cold air to our east massive high pressure to our north and it just continues feeding this very cold continental air our way never fully getting bitterly cold air towards us no beasts in the east but a chilly enough air mass this time of year to give wintry conditions much much colder but Again, I will emphasize here's on a bit of a knife edge. This high pressure, slightly different positioning, different orientation. We don't get the easterly we're in, and yeah, nothing really happens. So very much touch and go with this sort of scenario, but it does just show you what could occur if that high pressure does properly get going. A big 1,060 millibar high pressure system there towards Scandinavia. So huge high pressure system, but it will all depend on how it interacts with the jet stream. How strong will that big lobe of polar vortex towards northeast Canada and Greenland? How strong will that be? And will it knock that high pressure away? Or will the high pressure finally win out against the jet stream? It's failed the last few weeks, but could it win out? And could it actually pull in that easterly wind? We'll have to wait and see. Now, the GEM is definitely a run that doesn't allow that easterly to develop. The high pressure builds in into the weekend and start of next week and tries to push it towards Scandinavia. Does even try to push an easterly wind and does it for a time across Central Europe. But towards day 10, the jet stream wins out. And although, yes, eastern and southeastern Europe goes exceptionally cold, big cold pool sat down there, that air doesn't come our way. It goes to southeastern Europe instead. And actually, we start to see more of a wet and windy pattern or even stormy pattern developing once again. It's not too much of a difference. Again, it's that high pressure. It's just slightly further eastwards. And it means that we're not in that easterly flow the westy flow winds out. So again, not a massive difference in the major synoptic pattern, but just with the positioning and orientation of the high means that instead we're more of a westerly flow. So it is, as I said, very touch and go. And today, then it's in a shift more towards that easterly, but equally in the next couple of days, we could see a massive shift away. I wouldn't be surprised if that did occur. And if you finish by looking at the latest ECMWF ensembles, you can see again high pressure building in over the coming days, extending towards Scandinavia, having a go at pushing an easterly wind. No success in the first few days of February, but it has another go, another push of high pressure towards Scandinavia. And this looks a little bit more successful. We are starting to see those easterly winds unlocked. And there is quite a big cold pool sat to our east. Nothing monumental, no beasts from the east. We'd be seeing purples and more darker blues with the beasts from the east pattern, but still cold enough to give the temperatures around freezing in the day and well below freezing overnight if this air mass did pull in. It's one to keep a very close eye on, but definitely a shift to something more easterly focused from the ECM, the WF, and the GFS today. And the GM's not too far off, but kind of shows you what could occur if that high is slightly different uh, positioning. If you finish by looking at the latest ensembles, just quickly refresh this. These are the latest GFS. You can see over the next few days, we are generally average to below average. Pretty chilly, but with a bit more precipitation through Thursday and maybe through Saturday. So chilly, cold, frosts in places. And then as we head into early February, there was quite a big signal for average to above average conditions, but there is quite a big shift here, more towards average to below average conditions from this latest run. And that's because there's more continental flows. Not all flows produce big easterly winds, upper air temperatures down to the level which could produce snow or wintry conditions, but could just get a couple of degrees below freezing, which would be cold enough to get frost and fog and generally colder conditions. You can still see a high pressure dominant through the first 10 days of February, very little precipitation at all. Uh, of course, an easterly flow would have some convective showers, but not nothing too major that would crop up in the ensembles. But yes, definitely a shift towards something slightly colder here. And we can see that in the two meter temperatures, a little bit of a drop off there, four, five, six degrees for most of these ensemble members. And you can see that again on the dew points, more around freezing or even below freezing from some of the ensemble means here, which is indicative very much of a dry easterly flow. There is a big difference between an easterly wind and an easterly flow. Easterly flow would just develop, as I said, cold, frosty, below average temperatures, easterly wind, snow, winteriness. 
in that sort of scenario. So we'll have to wait and see, but definitely a big shift here from the ECM, uh, from the GFS ensemble, sorry, towards something quite a bit colder as we do head into early February. As I said, nothing massive, but definitely more seasonal and a big shift from yesterday. You can see though, it is all positioning of the high. Uh, the high pressure signal is still there. It's not a major synoptic change, just the positioning of that high and the orientation. However, if we do check out the latest ECMWF, this is the midnight run. We're not seeing that at all. Still average to above average, pretty much exactly the same as what we saw yesterday. Now, I will say this is the midnight run, so it is almost 12 hours old now. Um, the, the midday run is going to come out in the next hours, I'm recording this. So, unfortunately, we don't have that latest data, but it does just show you that only this morning, the major run like the East of will not hint again an easily flow at all, or at least uh, from their ensembles, they weren't. So, perhaps it's just a shift that we started to see throughout the day, or perhaps it's a bit of a wobble. Who knows? Eastern Earth this morning was not on board with it. GFS this evening is, and the Eastern Earth operational run is as well. So I think it's one to keep a very close eye on over the next few days. As I said, could have some quite drastic impacts on early February, could keep it very cold, and could, if the proper easterly gets going, produce something wintry. We will have to wait and see, not expecting any imminent conditions um, you know we are looking generally at average to below average temperatures over the coming days but really just frosty foggy and mid single digit days before it does turn milder towards the weekend with a bit of rain and then early february starting off probably at least initially milder with high pressure before we could see those temperatures dropping off as an easily flow develops so not expecting as I said anything too imminent but it really is that sort of week to 10 day time frame as ever which is causing the headaches so anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.